Hello, everyone, and welcome to Vior's and Ridgeline's Live Investment Summit Today, hosted by Six. I'm joined today by Mark Fedosowicz, Vior's CEO and President, Laurent Eustache, the Executive Vice President of Vior, and Chad Peters, President, CEO, and Director of Ridgeline Minerals. Each company is going to walk us through their own company presentation, and after, we're going to move on to a live Q&A session, where we'll be accepting and answering some questions. You can submit your questions using the Q&A panel found on the right-hand side of your screen at any time during today's presentation. And as always, the summit is being recorded, and it'll be available to watch afterwards on Six.com. So without further ado, Mark, I'm going to hand things over to you to get us kicked off. Thank you, Cam, and uh, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, uh, to our uh, Exploration Summit. Uh, so just briefly here, uh, we'll be presenting our company, VR, or Mining Explorer. This will be the uh, speed dating version, however, uh, since we're restricted to 10 minutes. Uh, I'll begin by cautioning everybody that there will be some forward-looking statements, so please take a moment to read uh, this page. So just briefly, uh, our company value proposition, uh, the way uh, Laurent and I have structured VR over the past year and a half is to provide investors with exposure to multiple potential discoveries. Uh, clearly, our, our flagship Beltier Gold project is our focal point at the moment where we believe that we have the potential for a discovery. Uh, we also have exposure to eight other gold projects in our portfolio. All of our projects are situated in either Quebec or Nevada, arguably two of the best mining jurisdictions in the world. Uh, highly committed management with strong leadership and an excellent track record. Management owns over 16% of the shares outstanding. So we're, are, we're fully aligned with uh, shareholders' interest. Uh, we have some excellent project partners, both on the financial and technical side, so Cisco Mining, uh, some of the funds in Quebec, FTQ, CDEX, uh, Iluka Resources out of Perth, Australia, and uh, SOCAM and Ridgeline Minerals, who's with us here today. So our hybrid strategy, uh, just in a nutshell, is we both explore and we invest uh, if we see a good opportunity. Uh, just briefly, corporate profile board of directors uh, uh, include Claude Saint-Jacques, he's the original founder of VR. He was also the founder of the very successful Virginia gold mines and Mazarin. Uh, myself, uh, I have over 30 years experience in the investment business and have an extensive uh, network in the junior mining space that I cultivated over the previous 35 years. Uh, the next three members of our board, Eric Dizogne, Charles-Olivier Taut, and Laurent, who's with us today, are sort of the new generation of Quebec entrepreneurs. Uh, all have had, had uh, a good degree of success in their own right over the last few years, and uh, we're very fortunate to have them on our board. We have an excellent management and technical team. Uh, I'll have Laurent will elaborate a little bit more about that as the uh, presentation goes on. Uh, just briefly, in a nutshell, uh, our corporate structure, uh, working capital, just a little shy of $2 million. Uh, we also just completed a flow-through share offering uh, at the end of October, which added another $1.49 million to our working capital. And then we also have investment in public companies. Uh, the lion's share of that is our, is our investment in Ridgeline Minerals. We own a 6.5% equity interest. Uh, very happy to have that. It's treated as a mid to long term investment, so we don't include that in our working capital. Shares outstanding, as you can see, and major shareholders include well, Cisco Mining, Management, Quebec Institutions, and Close Strategic Holders, which would comprise about 15 high net worth individuals who uh, are allowing us to execute on our strategy. Our market capitalization is about 15 million as of today. In terms of our gold projects, uh, all of our exposure is either in the province of Quebec and Canada or in Nevada, uh, via largely via Ridgeline Minerals. Just briefly about our hybrid strategy, uh, we've positioned the company in such a way that uh, we, can in we can either invest if we see a good opportunity, such as Ridgeline Minerals, or we've developed a really uh, comprehensive portfolio of precious metals projects, uh, some of which we are advancing 100% on our own, others which we will look for a good solid partner to either JV or option them. In addition, as I alluded to earlier, we own a 6.5% equity interest in Ridgeline Minerals, who's with us here today. I'll let Chad uh, share with you their story. 
So I'm going to pass it over to Laurent, who will go over our project portfolio and uh, our flagship Belter Gold project. Thanks, Mark, and it's a pleasure to share with you uh, today as well. Um, so just quickly on the, the technical, and uh, so you see on the map the location of our uh, project in Quebec. So a portfolio of gold project located in the uh, uh, abitibi Temiskaming region uh, south of Quebec. And they're almost uh, all district scale uh, or large scale um, uh, project. So um, <coughs> we have defined various uh, corporate criteria in order to uh, execute acquisition and invest in projects. And uh, we define four main criteria. Uh, so which are a mining friendly jurisdiction in North America. And at the moment, we expose our shareholders uh, in Quebec through our 100% owned project and through uh, some exposure to uh, Nevada with our investment uh, with Richline. We also uh, like to be in close proximity to existing uh, or advanced mine project. Uh, good infrastructures and easy access, and some uh, potential to uh, to advance rapidly the project. So these criteria um, are there to reduce the overall risk of exploration, lower the cost of exploration, considering that we're next to uh, infrastructures and road access, uh, reducing the stakes of economical potential. Uh, so no need to find a three million ounces to get an economical project. So, which at the end increase the odds of making new discoveries and the overall return of, on capital for our shareholders. So, uh, here is the location of our uh, project located in the Urban Barry uh, corridor. And you see the Mosso project and the Skyfall project in the geological continuity of uh, some uh, uh, high, high potential uh, projects uh, with Osisco and Bunterad uh, just delineating over uh, 8 million ounces of uh, high-grade uh, mineralization, mineralization. And also uh, the uh, La Flamme uh, Volcanic Corridor uh, below here uh, with uh, our Lignaris project in the continuity of um, what Amex is uh, delineating, high-grade mineralization next to Normetal mine. But um, I would like to spend a little, a little bit more, more time on our exciting flagship, flagship Beltar Gold project, which is uh, maybe a good example of what we've been executing uh, uh, on our strategy, corporate strategy, these last uh, 12, 12 months. So the location of the project is, uh, is in, the heart of, in the heart of the mining industry in Quebec, 95 kilometers south of Rwanda. Uh, it's a proven economical area where over 750,000 ounces of gold has been produced uh, at 10.7 gram per ton. So we saw an opportunity to consolidate for the first time and execute large scale uh, systematic exploration, which has never been done in the past, taking advantage to, uh, to using uh, modern techniques. Uh, we also saw the high grade component, which is uh, uh, of the belt, which is uh, a, a function of uh, return capital at the end, if we, have, if we are successful to find uh, a resource there. And uh, the historical drilling was just shallow, so opportunity to follow a long strike and adapt on the known mineralization of the camp. So here is the, um, since the acqu acquisitions only a year ago, we've completed two months uh, of uh, prospection. Uh, we also did a high resolution max survey, which is critical to better understand the structure, which are the plumbing of the mineralization in the area. We also did a first uh, 3D modeling, uh, which led us to initiate a first uh, 5,000 meter uh, drilling campaign that we initiated uh, a couple of weeks ago. So the project is composed with a uh, uh, brownfield area in the center where you see uh, the, 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 gold, the historical gold showings and two uh, greenfield area up north and down south. Here are some, um, we've been able to validate the high grade component of the belt uh, confirming location of historic uh, high grade uh, gold showings with up to 250 74.9 uh, gram per ton, uh, 121 gram per, per ton on quartz vein, as well as up to 50 gram per ton in the uh, intrusive rocks, uh, namely QFP. And uh, here you see the, the first uh, result of our uh, 3D structural modeling uh, of the past uh, production area, which we call now the historical, uh, the historic mine trend of Belter. And uh, um, that led us to, uh, to, to do that, to initiate that first drilling campaign. And I mean, for those interested, we've completed a, uh, 
a summit, technical summit on uh, on the the technical of of that uh, drilling campaign. And maybe just to to, to provide uh, and illustrate a uh, better sense of size and multi-target potential of uh, the Beltar project, here is a plan view of uh, work in progress at say uh, regional gold targeting uh, of the, on the brownfield where we uh, we see some uh, structural features associated with some uh, high-grade gold showings at surface, defining uh, potential gold traps and prospective optionality for value creation and new discovery at Beltair. So what I just uh, I will show you there. Okay, Here is uh, the campaign, the drilling campaign that we are doing at the moment on the property. But we also have some uh, continuities of mineralization untested on that part of the of the, the trend. But we also have some really great structural feature here with some structural control that could create some really great traps of gold here and continuity of high grade mineralization and folding uh, in various parts of the property. So um, I will uh, uh, stop there on the technical overview of what we've been doing and uh, Leave the mic to 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 uh, to Mark to wrap up the presentation of the hour. Thank you, Laurent. So, ju just uh, for the the audience's uh, information, so the opportunity at Vior, and just to summarize, uh, management team solid, low cost corporate structure, large insider share ownership. Uh, we've got a very innovative business model that provides our shareholders with exposure to nine promising precious metals projects, all in safe jurisdictions, either in Quebec or Nevada. Uh, Osisco Mining's uh, recent uh, investment in our company to the tune of 9.9% partially diluted is validation of our project's potential and uh, what Laurent and I have been able to execute strategically. Uh, investors can expect a continuous news flow in the coming year. Uh, Beltair is going to develop rapidly. Uh, we are in the midst of an initial 5,000 meter drill program, uh, which will likely be followed up with a second phase 5,000 meter in the new year. Uh, so expect a good steady stream and hopefully a, a new discovery. Wonderful. Well, thank you for that, Mark. Thank you for that, uh, Laurent, as well, for the great presentation. Chad, I'm going to bring up your slides, and then the floor is yours. All right. Thanks, Cam. That was the first time I actually saw your new model of the uh, of Beltair guys. That looks awesome. So I'm actually, I'm a shareholder at what I bought in on the 20 cent round, Mike, or Mike, Mark. Yes, that's right, Chad. Yeah. This, that project reminds me of Hard Rock, um, which Premier Gold found 8 million ounces. That's now in Equinox's hands. So similar type of structure, same story. So I'm excited to see what you guys' drilling brings. Okay, I'm going to go to full screen. All right, so originally, um, you know, I think uh, it's been a really busy year for us. We've had uh, some really exciting news come out of the company. And um, I think we're currently trading at 52-week uh, lows today. So there's potential opportunity here to uh, get in on an exciting story. So uh, why invest in Ridgeline Minerals? We are a Nevada-focused gold silver explorer. We have a portfolio of four prospective projects in the Carlin and Battle Mountain Eureka trends. We are a discovery-focused company. So um, our business model is to uh, make discoveries, take them to early resource stage, maiden resource at the most, um, and then try to monetize those assets, sell them to, uh, to folks that want to take it into production. So um, we have 154 square kilometer portfolio. And kind of something that sets us apart, I believe, is our strategic drilling contract. So I actually co-founded the company with the owner of a drilling company. Uh, what that meant is he took an equity stake in the company at the founding stage. In return, Ridgeline got a 15,000 meter drilling contract at cost. That means we were able to put more money in the ground early, higher potential for discovery, and every dollar goes a little bit further um, for Ridgeline shareholders when you invest in us. Um, we also just recently signed a $20 million U.S. earn-in agreement with Nevada Gold Mines. Now, I just said our goal is going out, making discoveries, and selling those assets. In this case, this was an incredible opportunity to partner with um, the two largest gold companies in the world, being Barrick and, uh, and Newmont, which are the joint venture holders of, of NGM. Um, and they're really aggressively advancing this project now. They're already out and drilling it, and we just signed the deal um, less than uh, two and a half months ago. So. Really excited to see how that comes along. We have a new discovery at our Selena project. That's turning into a silver, gold, lead, and zinc story. Significant exploration upside. I'll show you a little bit about that uh, um, down the, the slide deck here. And um, 
you know, we have a really experienced team. We've got found over 50 million ounces. I'm pressing the wrong button here, Cam. Sorry. There we go. So we have over 50 million ounces of discovery under our team's management and board, um, mostly in Nevada, but globally as well. Uh, and our team owns 15% of the outstanding share float. So very well aligned with our shareholders. Uh, as I mentioned here, a few quick points. Uh, folks like Mike Harp, my VP Exploration. Mike was a part of over 5 million ounces of discovery in Nevada with Gold Standard Ventures and directly led to the discovery of the North Dark Star Discovery, which took that company to a market cap of almost a billion dollars back in uh, 2016, 2017. Um, we've continued to build out our team with a solid group of uh, technical folks, capital markets, really trying to build that, that quality team as we continue to grow the company. From a cap structure perspective, we have just under 56 million shares non-diluted. Cash position as of November 1st of right around 2.6 million. We're gonna end the year with about 2.3 million Canadian, which leaves us fully funded to go out and do our uh, expiration program at Selena in the spring. As I mentioned, we have 15% management ownership of which I own 7%. I was able to do that by uh, pretty much bootstrapping the company for the first 15 months while we were getting it up and going and followed that up with 150,000 um, cash of, of my own personal investment into the company at various levels along the way. So uh, as Mark had mentioned previously, Vior is a substantial shareholder in the company. They have been incredible shareholders, uh, came in on the seed round and have backed us ever since. So appreciate having you guys along for the ride. And uh, we also have a good mix of institutions. Um, we had over 12 institutions buy into the company at the IPO in August of 2020. And uh, our most recent financing brought in about 3.75 million at 50 cents. So fully diluted, we have 70 million shares out, nice tight share structure, and with positive drill results, which we believe will be on their way um, in 2020 with lots of uh, catalysts coming down the pipe, um, the stock is, is really primed to take off if, uh, if we can deliver. So we have our four projects. I'm only gonna touch briefly on all four of them. Uh, today, as the guys mentioned, we're restricted to about 10 minutes. So 154 square kilometers and a really good mix um, of the four projects, right? So we have Bell Creek and Carlin East, very strategic land positions in the North Carlin trend. We had a difficult uh, drilling program at Carlin East this year. We only got one of three holes down to target depth. So it's not a matter of, of did we break the geologic target? No, there's still great potential there. We just weren't able to get the holes down as deep as we would have liked. So um, we're definitely going to go back, um, retest those targets at a later date. Swift, we just completed an earn-in agreement, 20 million US with Nevada Gold Mines. Now that is greater than our entire market cap of our company right now. Just that deal alone is 20 million US over the first five years. And then we have our new discovery at Selena, which is quickly turning into our flagship asset as far as expiration. All right, just trying to undo that, there we go. So we'll start with Swift, um, 75 square kilometers, high grade underground gold target, and, and a big reason why we did this deal, I mean, 75 squ square kilometers, that is a massive land package, right? It's directly on trend of a 20 million ounce gold mine at Pipeline, 15 million ounces at Cortez Hills, and what will very likely become a 15 to 20 million ounce complex at Gold Rush and Four Mile. Now we're only uh, six kilometers away from the Pipeline mine, directly on trend of that fault, same fault zone. And we've been able to consolidate that entire district into a consolidated 75 square kilometer uh, chunk of ground. In 2020, we proved that the same host rocks that host all these ounces to the south, the Wenban formation actually exists on our project. It had been written off previously. We were able to prove that concept was false. And we were able to bring in Nevada Gold Mines as a, as a partner on the project. So as far as the deal goes, it's a four part deal. Started with uh, just under 500,000 Canadian in cash reimbursed us on signing. There's an initial earn in phase of 20 million for 60% um, to earn, or 20 million, yeah, US 20 million for 60%, sorry. Um, of which 4 million of that is guaranteed before December 31st of 2023. Now what gets us pretty excited is Nevada Gold Mines just mobilized a rig last week to the site. They're gonna spend about a million dollars in 2021. So they're already quickly uh, burning through that uh, 4 million requirement um, in only the first few months after signing this deal. Now they can learn an additional 10% for a total of 70% by spending 10 million US over a three year period following the initial earn in. And what really gets me excited is this development option. So Ridgeline actually negotiated where we retain a 25% carried interest in the project and the Nevada Gold Mines can earn that 75% total by taking the project fully carried to production at their cost of capital. So um, what this means for us is for a massive project like SWIFT, 
we're going to see zero dilution to our shareholders and aggressive expiration completed on this project by one of the most successful expiration teams in Nevada when it comes to deep high-grade Carlin type gold systems. So it's a great opportunity for us to participate in the upside um, with a world-class um, expiration team. And we hope that we'll see a major discovery here over the next, uh, call it 12 to 18 months. Uh, then I'm just going to quickly touch on Carlin East and Bell Creek. Combined, these are two 40 square kilometer land package right in the North Carlin trend. And I think it's kind of important to highlight just this chunk of ground right here is host to over 150 million ounces of gold. This is one of the greatest endowed areas in a, on a kilometer basis anywhere in the world. And we own, we are the largest individual shareholders aside from Nevada gold mines um, in this area. So if you look, our Carlin East project is in gray. Our Bell Creek project is in yellow. Carlin East is directly on trend of the North Leeville discovery on the same fault zone, this guy right here called the Four Corners Fault as what hosts the Leeville and North Leeville discovery to the south. North Leeville just returned through NGM and Barrick. They just announced 42 meters of 32.6 grams per ton right here, about four kilometers off the edge of our project. These are world-class intercepts. We were looking to hit the same host rocks in our crash zone target program this year. Unfortunately, we did not hit what we were looking to intersect. We didn't get the holes deep enough due to very challenging conditions. And we're gonna come back in and drill those targets later in 2020, uh, 2022, hopefully. Now on top of that, we also have our Bell Creek project, which sits directly adjacent to the REN deposit. They, NGM just put out in Q3, significant new results of up to seven meters of 22 grams gold, 12.8 meters of 27 grams gold, now that project, that maiden resource that they're intending on putting out sits only 600 meters off the edge of our project boundary here at Bell Creek. So this is a very strategic chunk of ground. You look at these two projects together and we have, I like to think, a very exciting opportunity to participate in some new discoveries in the heart of the North Carlin trend. So I will show you quickly here, AA prime, this long section. This is just kind of an idea of, of where we think this project is heading, right? So you have all these discoveries, Carlin, uh, Leeville Mine, North Leeville Discovery, all along the Leeville Corridor. And then you have our drill hole. The single drill hole we tried getting down here was 2103. We ended up on the wrong side of a fault zone, ended up drilling a large exaggerated section of this beige pink um, Vanini formation, which is the host rock we don't want to, or the rock we don't want to be in. The blues and greens of the, uh, of the Popovich and bootstrap beneath that were our target host rocks. So we drilled 1200 meters, didn't quite hit where we wanted to be we believe we can go into this structural block next year and probably hit targets of be at between 11 and 1200 meters. Um, these targets here are on average eight to 900 meters. So you're just seeing a gentle dip of the rocks getting slightly deeper as you go over that four kilometer stretch. So great conceptual target. Um, the issue with our drill program this year was purely execution and, and we're gonna work on that and improve next time along. So. So last thing I want to show you is the Selena project. It's our uh, quickly becoming our flagship, just under 40 square kilometers. And what's interesting about this is it's a nice balance to the deep high grade potential we've developed at our other three projects. So this is shallow oxide. It's silver, gold, lead, and zinc. So great um, diversification for our portfolio. And we've had a lot of success there since 2020. So we started out with an original discovery of 38 meters of 50 grams silver, 0.7 grams gold at surface. We since drilled 36 holes, these blue dots throughout the resource, pending resource area, if you want to call it that. Um, and we've had some significant drill results, right? So we hit 44 meters of 123 grams silver, 0.1 gold, percent and a half lead, and 0.6% zinc um, oxide, continuous mineralization that goes for over a kilometer down dip from where we discovered it at the surface, all the way down to about 200 meters vertical depth at the edge of the deposit. Um, we also hit intercepts of up to four meters of 4.6 meters of 421 grams silver, 0.6 gold, 4.4% lead and 3.7% zinc. That is a significant polymetallic intercept, right? A zinc equivalent of that is about 25%. So that started getting us really interested and excited about what the potential um, could be to the west of our known discovery. So what we've done is we've actually developed a new CRD model. If you were to look, we're gonna look at a cross section extending essentially all the way across our project out towards where there sits a porphyry right on the edge of our project. I want to show you what that looks like. That's what's going to be the focus of our 2022 drill program. So this is our conceptual model. This would be that porphyry that sits right off the edge of our project. It used to be owned by Freeport, too deep to be a, a, an open pit, 
too low grade to be an underground copper mine, but it is a significant porphyry system. Here's our known discovery. Starts at surface and dips gently under cover. And then there's a three kilometer gap in between the porphyry and our project that has never been drill tested. Now, just based on how a porphyry system works, you should get porphyry, then you're gonna get some scar and mineralization, then you would get a large CRD target. Now this would be analogous to what uh, Arizona Mining's Taylor deposit looks like, um, just from purely from a conceptual basis. I hope we find something like that, but we'll see. Um, and then what we drill right on the edges of the system is showing indications of polymetallic CRD, but we're not into the core of it yet. So what we're gonna do in 2022 is we're gonna come in with a 6,000 meter program. Now we are fully funded to do that program with cash in hand. We're gonna come in in April and we're gonna drill multiple holes, testing across this system all the way from the edges of our known drilling to up to 800 meters vertical depth as we get towards this porphyry. And we believe there's potential for a large tonnage polymetallic system here. So big, big uh, potential for us. And between what I think we have is a very exciting opportunity at um, Swift, it's being drilled right now. We're gonna have results for that initial drill program out in Q1 of 2022. So heading into next year, you know, we have significant catalysts moving ahead, right? We have NGM fully, fully financed and moving forward our SWIFT project. We're going to drill Selena in the spring, 5,500 to 6,000 meters. On top of that, we're working on some pretty exciting acquisitions um, that would complement the existing portfolio. And as I mentioned before, both Bell Creek and Carlin East are very strategic, albeit deep, um, exploration targets. And we think there's lots of potential there to uh, kind of continue growing the story at both targets. So, um, if you're looking at a product company that I think gives you multiple kicks at the can, great upside potential, I think you should uh, take a serious look at Ridgeline. So I'll leave it there. Great. Thanks for that, Chad. Great okay. presentations all around. Uh, we'll be walking into the Q&A section of today's presentation on Summit now. I'd like to remind everyone in the audience that you can ask questions using the Q&A tab found on the right-hand side of your screen. Um, but we've had some questions come in in advance. So you there's a similarity between these companies you both have portfolio you both have a, sorry uh both have a portfolio being a single project company can you tell us why you've taken that approach uh, mark i'm gonna have pass it over to you first sure thanks cam you know, as we outlined in our uh, hybrid uh, model, uh, this approach gives us uh, exposure to multiple potential discoveries and uh, also looks to diversify our risk overall corporate risk profile. Um, you know, we, we believe that even a small junior needs a good pipeline of projects in order to advance. It's a very high risk business. Uh, there's no guarantees that any one project is going to have success. So uh, I think it's it's instrumental to have a, a good diversified portfolio in your pipeline. Uh, you know, the, the other reason, too, is we also believe that, uh, you know, we can potentially JV or option some of these projects that we put together and look to create value that way in, in the coming bull market. We also believe that... Uh, you know, in the case of Vior, we, we've got a number of district scale gold projects. Uh, we, we certainly cannot advance all of them on our own, uh, but we do believe that uh, projects of this stature will be in very high demand uh, in the coming bull market. Absolutely. Chad, do you have any comments about that, about why you've taken the approach to developing a portfolio? Yeah, Mark hit on it really well. I mean, we took a very similar approach when we built Portfolio. Um, but one of the things, you know, like I've, I've been lucky enough to be a part of over 10 million ounces of discovery in Canada and the US, and every single ounce was hard to find, right? So uh, making sure, I mean, Laurent's given a big nod, you know what exactly what I mean, right? So, um, you know, making sure that you're diversifying that risk. Um, we focused first on team and projects. Once we had those built out, we started just doing baseline work on all of our projects to define what our flagship would be. And, and that's where we're at right now is we're starting to execute on kind of the greater model for the company, which is Selena, we're advancing 100%. We found an excellent partnership with Swift and NGM, and uh, we're going to continue to kind of strategically advance those. And hopefully one of those projects is going to flesh out as, as a real flagship for us over the next, call it 12 months. Absolutely. Uh, so, Chad, your portfolio is in Nevada. Correct. Why did you choose Nevada? What's attractive about it? Uh, well, you know, one, I lived in Nevada, so it was nice to be able to drive to the projects. But um, no, I mean, the main reason was, is just like um, Mark and the guys in Quebec, um, I really wanted to focus on, um, on uh, you know, very secure jurisdictions. I mean, exploration is incredibly risky as it is. You start adding in jurisdictional risk, 
uh, government risk, you name it, right? Um, that just makes it even more of a difficult story to push forward. So we really wanted to make sure that we could focus just on the science, making discoveries, and not worry about our project getting nationalized or, you know, not being able to permit a mine. So. Right, absolutely. And, and to that same point, Mark Laurent, what's, uh, what's the reason that you're in Quebec? Well, I guess similar to Chad's uh, response, uh, you know, Quebec is a, our backyard. Uh, we're most familiar with the landscape, the projects, the opportunities there. Um, it is a world-class mining jurisdiction with uh, some outstanding precious metal and other mineral endowment. Uh, you know, one other point would be it provides some of the most favorable uh, tax incentives for junior exploration companies uh, to to advance their projects, both at the company level and at the investor level. So we, we certainly have an advantage in that regard, and this helps to reduce the uh, the cost of exploration and allows us to drill more for less. Okay, fair enough. The next question we've received reads like this. Part of your success is your technical team on the ground. Can each of you tell us more about the skills and experience that your team brings? Mark, Laurent, I'd like to pass that over to you to begin with. Yeah, I'll, I'll take that one, uh, and that's a really good question. And, and before I answer that one, uh, I'd say that maybe that's one of the reasons as well. When I looked at the opportunity to join in Dior, I was looking at the people around the table, and uh, that's fundamental to create value. And one of the aspects as well was the investment that uh, was already done in Bridgeline, and I really liked what Chad was doing and the way they were working. So, so these. This is for me the, the fundamental, as, fundamental aspect for value creation in, in our industry. People is uh, really key and we constantly have to adjust uh, the level of expertise and skill set to, to ensure the proper execution um, in the best interest for, for our shareholders. And for Vior, I mean, uh, uh, at the moment we're pretty well positioned uh, now to execute advanced expression drilling, which is what, what, what is required at, uh, at Belter. Absolutely. Chad, maybe you could tell us about your team. Yeah, so when I was building out our team, I really focused on, um, you know, trying to find, especially on the technical side, uh, discoveries already in the, you know, significant discoveries in Nevada. That led me to bring on Mike Harp um, at the seed round for our company. He was a big part of the success that Gold Standard Ventures had. Um, him and I were actually lucky enough to be part of kind of the two larger um, discoveries not made by a major in Nevada over the past kind of five to seven years so um, at our respective companies so really wanted to focus on discovery that was our business model so our team is is very um we're not afraid of risk um very open-minded and, and and that's how we're advancing our projects for sure uh, so chad i've had a question come in for you uh regarding your swift project you recently partnered with nevada gold mines uh which is a joint venture between barrick and newmont why did you choose to go with a partner and not go alone well, you know, our, our original model was to do all of our projects on our own, right? Like, you know, 100% ownership, advance them forward. Um, what we quickly realized with SWIFT was it is a district scale asset. It's a massive opportunity. But at the same time, um, it was getting pretty big for our team to go out and effectively explore it, right? 75 square kilometers. Um, and we're talking about half a million dollar drill holes for a single drill hole, right? So bringing in a group like Nevada Gold Mines who believed in, believed in the story, really liked the work we'd done already, and let them take over and take on all of that that dis expiration risk um, while still having meaningful upside in the project. It, it was too good of, of an opportunity to pass up. And it shows to our shareholders that we can attract the, the biggest gold companies in the world to our portfolio, right? So we're not going after small projects. We're going after, you know, huge discoveries. And, and this is an opportunity to, to do that. So it was great. All right. Um, and regarding Vior, uh, Vior's largest shareholder is a Cisco Mining. Mark, go on. What did they bring to the table for Vior? What's the advantage there? Take that, uh, Cam. I mean, the Osisco uh, shareholding is basically an instant validation of what Laurent and I just executed uh, in terms of projects and uh, testament to our to our management team that we assembled as well. Uh, in addition, they provide really good financial and technical expertise uh, that we have access to, and uh, hopefully at some point we'll have access to their network uh, should we have success at our built project. And I, I would add as well that uh, we're pretty fortunate to have them. I mean, they are the one with the success uh, in the past uh, doing what we tried to execute at Belter uh, at Canon Monarchic, doing that 
exploration, looking for larger scale uh, mineralization in the past high grade mine. And uh, so, so we're really pleased to, to, to see that these, these, these high level team are looking at us and uh, interested to, to help us doing that. That's great. Uh, question for both of you, both companies. Uh, after making a discovery, are your plans to develop and build a mine? Uh, if not, why not? Um, Chad, maybe you can begin. Uh, yeah, we, you know, we have zero intention of building a mine. I'd be straight with straight up with that. Um, I've been a part of um, PEA's development companies right through to production with with Premier, and, and uh, I saw how how you know lo how long term and a dilutive of a process transitioning from a junior to a producer can be. So we really want to focus on the discovery phase of kind of the exploration cycle. Great, great risk reward there. So that's where we're going to firmly stay. And and um, whether we can partner with groups like NGM and maintain a, a, an interest on the back end or just sell a project outright entirely depends on the, the scale of a discovery. Right. And what about your yeah, I mean, I think we totally agree with with that statement. I mean, uh, the idea is do what you know and know what you do. And there's a reason why this, there's a segmentation in the industry with the explorers and the, and the producers. And uh, I mean, the, the discoveries are mainly uh, uh, explorers, but I mean, they, they, the producer are also exploring. But and that, that, I mean, uh, it's... It's, I'd say it's rare but possible to see some exploration companies successfully executing the transition uh, from exploration to, uh, to more advanced mining development. But in general, when, when the quality and success of a, an exploration project fits the corporate standard of a uh, producer, the best way to serve a shareholder's interest uh, will be uh, usually to, uh, through a selling project or selling the company. So that's what we aim to, to do as well at VR. Okay. Yeah, I, I would just add that further to Chad and Laurent's comment that the, the most value creation phase is, is made in the discovery phase. So, you know, that's what both of our companies are looking to achieve here. And, uh, you know, well, time will tell. Absolutely. Francis in the audience has asked uh, of your specifically, how do you define district scale? Large scale? Uh, it's a good question. I mean, there's no exact uh, definition of that. It's also, uh, it's mainly part of uh, the type of uh, uh, the, 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 the greenstone belt on what you're, you're, you're working on. For example, at Delta, we, we may have, uh, I'd say, of the, of the, uh, of the belt. So it's, it's a district scale. The same for, for Skyfall, which is, uh, a portion, really large portion of the Urban, urban Barry Greenstone Belt. But we also, Lignaris, for example, is more like a large scale project with uh, up to uh, 15 to 17 kilometers long uh, project. So, so it, it's, it's not a, there's not an exact answer on that, but it's, it's the, it's depending on the type of project, I'd say. Right, absolutely. Uh, Jeff in the audience is uh, an another question for Vior, but how many locations does 5,000 meters get you? How many, sorry? How many locations? So we have about uh, 8 to uh, 10 uh, drill holes uh, planned for that initial uh, 5,000 meters. We aim to test uh, the continuities at depths and a long strike of the known mineralization in the, strict, uh, the past district mine trend. Um, the idea is to uh, do some large step out from known mineralization to, to better understand the structures and the relationship between uh, uh, mineralization, lithologies, and, and structures to, to eventually end up with immediate success and, uh, and, and, and new discoveries, but also to really define the, the, the frame of that corridor, which will help us to design and refine our 3D model and in, in the objectives to, to have uh, better uh, targets next time. Absolutely. Uh, Eric has another question for viewer in the audience. Um, any views on the Barry Urban Belt being on the radar screens of majors, uh, specifically following Northern Star Resources agreement with the Cisco Mining? I mean, uh, for sure, these projects are really exciting. The grade is really great uh, when you look at Buntera and, and, and Windfall. As with Osisco mining, I mean, these are really, uh, uh, it's about 
8 million plus uh, camp, mining camp, potential mining camp here, and uh, with pretty high grade. Uh, so, so that's the reason we've been attracted to that particular area as well. So, uh, because as uh, as everyone knows, grade is uh, return capital at the end when you um, when you are able to uh, to sell. Uh, sorry, Laurent, I just missed the end of that. Maybe you could uh, repeat yourself. Just the last sentence there. Yeah, the, uh, the the grade is something which is really uh, critical when you look at to monetize a project. That's right. the that's the whole point. No, fair enough. Absolutely. Um, we have a question from Sven uh, or Sven. Sorry, could you comment or summarize again the upcoming news flow? Just to reiterate, I think. I'll let you go, Mark, on that. I can, I can take that. Um, well, listen, we, we've embarked on a 5,000 meter drill program uh, that's currently underway. We've, we have two holes done, uh, hopefully have another two holes uh, before Christmas. Um, obviously, the holidays are going to slow things down a little bit, but we should be back there uh, early in the new year to complete uh, the initial 5,000 meter uh, first phase. Um, in terms of uh, news flow, uh, you know, get, given the way the, the labs are fairly backed up, uh, I would expect about a, a two-month window to receive results at the, at the minimum. Uh, you know, obviously, if we see something uh, really interesting and encouraging that we, we think should be uh, rushed, uh, we'll certainly uh, undertake that and uh, see if we can speed the process up. I don't know if you can add to that, Laurent, in terms of time frames. I think it's pretty pretty much the, the situation at the moment. We have had some questions come in for RDG. Um, sure. Do you have any probable timeframes for future acquisitions by Ridgeline? Yeah, we're actually working on something right now that we're, about. Um, we're in the kind of, call it, uh, we're past the negotiation phase. It's just in the lawyer's hands. So we will have something out uh, new for the market that uh, will be out, let's call it, in the next uh, 45 days. Okay, sounds great. Um, this is a question um, from Fred in the audience to both uh, companies, but uh, OTC volume is very light. Any plan to get some liquidity for U.S.-based investors? Um, Chad, maybe you want to take that one first, if you like, and we go to the Europe. Yeah, we find um, you're, you're right. The OTC listing, um, you know, is a great, great thing to have, but we don't have a ton of liquidity on it. Um, we are working with potentially adding a market maker in the U.S. to try to bolster a little bit of um, liquidity. And we are going to be focusing a bit more on U.S. marketing as well next year and trying to bring in a larger uh, investor network out of the U.S. So that should help with both. Absolutely. Mark, uh, Laurent? Yeah, in the case of Vior, uh, we're actively looking right at the moment to uh, to obtain a, a better over-the-counter listing. Right now, we're we're listed on the pink sheets. We trade by appointment only, uh, but uh, we're seriously looking at uh, filing an application, uh, uh, which is probably a three-month process uh, to be on the over-the-counter QB. Okay, absolutely. Uh, Eric has a question uh, for you, Chad. At Selena, the CRD conceptual targets depths range from 250 to 900 meters. Uh, are there many brittle faults in the area? Yeah, there is quite a bit of, you know, as, as we get out to the farthest edge of our property, we're, we're proposing that it could be, you know, 900 meters. We really don't have a lot of control there. Um, but just based on the dip and, and structural measurements in the area, um, there is a fair few northwest uh, brittle faults that are actually consecutively, progressively down dropping the system into the basin. You also have uh, an overprinting thrust fabric that is kind of, uh, in some cases, thrusting up units. In other cases, you see a more exaggerated down drop along where those northwesters intersect the hanging footwall sides of those thrusts. So um, I guess your answer is yes. Fair sure enough. <laughs> Quick answer. Great. Uh, Sven also has a question for you again, Chad, as well. Um, sure. But uh, how is the concrete plan going forward regarding the Kryland East crash zone with a view to uh, current drought results? Yeah, you know, um, the crash zone was really frustrating for us. I mean, that's been something we've been wanting to get a drill hole in for two years. And I think the fact that NGM has an incredible discovery only a few kilometers off the property only heightened expectations for that program. Um, so our issue was execution. We're going to be taking a step back. We need to raise more money to make sure we can be um, go through and, and see these uh, holes to completion. And we also need to let the drilling market cool a little bit. Um, 
in, I drilled, we drilled a thousand meter drill hole, almost 1100 meters at Swift in December of 2020. Uh, our cost is about $150 a foot cost. Um, in the 1200 meter hole at, at Carlin East, only six months later, our costs were $350 a foot. So costs have, have more, almost tripled um, in a six month time frame, and, and that's not a good thing for our shareholders to be pumping money in the ground at those kind of levels. So we're going to wait for the market to cool, renegotiate a better drilling contract, you know, guarantee our costs. And I think I didn't clarify very well. We have a strategic drilling contract, but that's only for RC, which is two depths of about 500 meters. We have to use a third-party core contractor to take those holes to completion, and that's where we lost control of our costs. And um, it's a function of the market and difficult drilling, and so we need to make sure that we can control those costs before we go back into to Carlin East and, and do a bigger program. Absolutely. Judd, fast forward a year from now, how do you think your company is going to be different? What should investors be looking for? Well, you know, I think we've we've done a good job of executing on our, our model base, you know, right from working out of my garage in 2019 through to our, our, our listing and, and now deal with NGM. So what you want to see in the next year is, is I believe we have multiple catalysts at all of our, at, at least three of our projects that you're going to see get fleshed out in 2022. I think you're going to see a big discovery from one of those projects. And I hope that we're going to be a, a lar- largely different stock prices or result, but I guess we'll have to wait and see. Great. And I'd like to ask the same question of uh, you, Mark and Long. Looking forward, what's going to be different and what should investors be looking for? Sure, I'll, I'll take that question, Cam. You know, I, I think uh, given what we just accomplished in the last 12 months, uh, consolidating a district scale uh, mining camp that had, had really never been properly explored in the last 50 years, fast forward to today, we're drilling on it uh, as we speak. Um, I, I think we're going to ramp up a pretty aggressive drilling program sometime in 2022. Uh, we're hoping to make a discovery there in 2022, uh, which should hopefully add to some significant shareholder value. Um, in, in addition to that, we've got several other uh, really promising gold projects. And uh, I think in 2022, we're likely to find a really good partner, uh, you know, who can advance these projects uh for the benefit of both our shareholders and their shareholders and create value that way. Great. Well, thank you, Mark. Thank you, Laurent. Thank you, Chad. Uh, That is all the time we have today. Uh, So I want to thank everyone in attendance, but also I want to thank all of our presenters today participating in today's joint summit. Um, But to the audience, if you didn't get a chance to get your questions answered, or if you think of one after the fact, you can find each company's presentation with their contact information in the handout tab if you'd like to reach out. You can also find more information, of course, at vior.ca and ridlineminerals.com. So with that, I'm going to hand it back to Chad for some closing comments before we go to Mark for the final word. Chad? Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Cam. I think you handled it really, kind of covered everything really well. I would encourage anyone to head to our website. We have Verify Models, so 3D interactive models of all of our projects on the, um, on the uh, website. Go in there, spin it around. Um, it's all there for you to see. And if you have any questions, please get back to me. Absolutely. And Mark Laurent, some uh, final words. Mark? Oh, Mark, you're just muted there. Go ahead now. (laughs) Just to follow up to Chad's comments, I'd like to thank everybody for taking the time today to to listen to our stories. And I'd strongly encourage everyone to uh, follow both our companies. I think there's a lot of exciting uh, uh, things happening in 2022, potential discoveries on both ends. Uh, I think this is an opportune time in the market right now to initiate a position on our respective companies. Uh, I know, like, I'm not going to speak for Chad, but uh, I am a shareholder of Ridgeline personally. I know that uh, he's been under some pressure due to tax tax motivated reasons. Uh, It's been pretty vicious this year. Um, I think these are opportune times for seasoned investors to take advantage in the market. Uh, in the case of Vior, uh, we're trading right around or slightly below uh, where Cisco Mining bought into our shares back back in March. Uh, we haven't been subject to the same uh, vicious tax loss selling because most of our shareholders are not down uh, from their initial cost base. But uh, I think we represent some excellent opportunity from a risk reward point of view uh, going forward to 2022.